In this video, we are going to demonstrate uh, the transient recovery voltage analysis on line cases. So for every TRD problem, uh, it's always very important to model stray capacitance and that for all equipment and especially a large inductive equipment like transformers, uh, of course CVTs, uh, CTs, basically all equipment in the substation uh, must be modeled uh, with their stray capacitance, uh, even the bus bar. When everything is in a substation, you can lump all the capacitance of the substation into one, and so basically add all the capacitance together. Uh, so what is important is that the, this small value of capacitance may have an impact, especially on the rate of rise of recovery voltage. And for cases where, for example, you disconnect a transformer, so like transformer limited fault, these straight capacitance actually dictate completely the behavior of the TRV. Um, for line modeling, it's uh, recommended to use frequency dependent model of lines or even wide band, which is even better. So with that, that's actually what we recommend even more. Um, if you look at uh, IEEE, uh, IEEE guidelines like the C37011, um, a lot of end calculations are done in here, and so uh, constant parameter line models are used. Uh, but when you get to use an, an empty type software, uh, it's better, of course, to use the frequency dependent model. You will have a more accurate result, and then of course you will be free to choose uh, whatever safety coefficient if you are, if you want to have a conservative approach. When uh, we study uh, TRV, it's a fairly local study, which means you will model everything around like uh, 30 to 40 miles radius around the circuit breaker, uh, especially for a line TRV. So you will model typically the, of all the uh, in, um, incoming line in the substation up to the next discontinuity. The next discontinuity, what it is, it's like the next substation where, for example, you have a, a transformer or if you have a transmission line, which then is connected to several transmission lines. Um, assuming that this is at least 20 or 30 miles away, um, the bottom line is when you do those transients, you, you are going to have traveling waves traveling in the circuit and you want to make sure to model enough so the traveling waves go far enough, far off and don't have time to come back. And if in practice they would have time to come back, back it means you need to model this part. Uh, so this is especially true for um, line TRV. When it comes to transformer TRV, like transformer limited fault, uh, or uh, reactor TRV, uh, it's not as uh, um, critical to model far off away the uh, away of the capacitor of the uh, breaker, uh, but for line TRV it's definitely important. Right, so let's take a look at an example, which is the one we provide here with the EMTP, and which is also the guideline described in the IEEE um, in the IEEE standard. So here, what we want to do, we have this transmission line here, um, and we want to study the TRV of this line. Uh, originally, the line is uh, 10 kilometers. However, as you see, when I did the modeling, I cut the line in two pieces, one of uh, 8 kilometers, the other one of 2 kilometers. Uh, the reason for that is so I'm uh, able to perform the short line fold. For the short, short line fold, what I'm going to do is place a single face to ground fault here at the point at this point and uh, disconnect the line. Uh, so of course in reality there is only one line but here for the sake of modeling we created two, two frequency dependent lines which is actually which are the same just the lengths vary and we cut this 10 kilometers line into two, two smaller lines. So remember when we perform a TRV analysis we typically focus on worst case scenarios so here, the short line fault, we are going to do a single uh, single face to ground fault. And um, so this will give us the worst rate of rise of recovery voltage. So it will be very important right after the current is cut. Uh, the voltage will rise very quickly due to the first um, traveling waves at the, at the point where the fault is applied. 
um, the trigon wave reflection, of course. So this is the, the will be the most critical. Then we are going to go to terminal three phase folds to get the worst to, to get the maximum uh, transient recovery voltage. Okay, so in our circuit, the, the circuit breaker will be here. So typically, uh, when you do, do a TRD study, you use an ideal switch. Uh, however, here in EMTP, we have a specific breaker that you should use for TRD. I recommend you to use it only for TRD study because it has a lot of things in there that may slow down simulations to help you design the breaker for TRDs. If you do other type of study, you are just you know, putting more burden for nothing. So just drag and drop here this circuit breaker at this point. Before I get into the circuit breaker, let's take a look at the rest of the circuit. So like, like explained, we model all transmission lines up to the next discontinuity, whatever it is. Um, here we have transformers. Typically when you have a transformer, because it's a large and active device and transients will not go through, uh, there is no need to model what's at, uh, before it. So you can simply put a network equivalent. So a network equivalent, it's a sources with a short circuit impedance that you may define either with the short circuit impedance or with the short circuit current and power. So you have two options, of course. Then if you look at the substation, uh, so the substation here is modeled as a node. So it's basically this node here. All capacitance in the substations are plumped and put connected in here. You also have the three capacitance of each transformers. For better precision, you may even put the stray capacitance winding to winding from the primary to the secondary and winding to ground on the other side. Um, that, that would be even best, best practice. Here we kind of reproduced was, what was done in the IEEE guideline. Okay, so the first step here, we are going to apply, for example, let's start with the terminal fold. Fold it here. And I'm going to put three phase fold ungrounded, which is the even worse case. Um, ungrounded folds are very uncommon. Uh, so even though you may be conservative and use the, those for um, to design uh, your circuit breaker, um, it's acceptable also to use grounded three phase folds. And um, it's more realistic. But here for the sake of the demonstration, we'll use three phase ungrounded bolted folds with no resistance. Uh, if we follow the IEEE standard, the fold is applied in steady state. And uh, so that, therefore we will have no um, uh, DC component, no asymmetrical component when we clear the fold, which constitute actually a worst case scenario. Of course, everyone is free to then decide to apply the fold at different instant to see the impact of the DC component. It's always a good idea. And so the, here the fold will be cleared by this breaker. So we will assume this Act this particular fault here never opened. All right, now let's go into our circuit breaker. Here we are going to disconnect about at the beginning of the simulation, five milliseconds. Remember that circuit breaker opens at zero crossing. So even if you put here five milliseconds, it will actually open at the next zero crossing after five milliseconds for each phase individually. Of course, each phase will uh, cut the current individually because the zero crossing will not occur at the same time. Um, you may specify a current margin, which is called the chopping current, if the uh, arc instability would cut actually uh, the current. So typically it can be between uh, zero and uh, maximum 10 to 50 amps for vacuum circuit breaker. Typically vacuum circuit breaker are the one which cut the current more. SF6 will not cut so much, uh, but so this is another topic. Okay, so here we leave it to zero for this case. Okay, then here you go to the TRV tab. So here we're interested in drawing the ETRV and so you will select the standard. So if the goal is to test a specific breaker which is already designed, then you may select here which standard is a, must be applied. And then here select uh, the class. Here we are in uh, here, effectively Hurst. Uh, the voltage is 145. Okay, let's uh, take a standard value of short circuit current, for example, 
and uh, let's apply here. So right now what we're doing, like I said, is a three-phase terminal fault. Um, so here we need to enter the short circuit current to clear. What is that? It's why is that? It's because this envelope here will depend on the short circuit current to clear. For example, if you are cutting the maximum rated short circuit current, the curve here which will be used is what is called the T100, which is the TRV for the maximum current. If you are cutting 60% of this maximum current, we are going to use what is called the T60. And similarly, you have the T30 and the T10. It's important, and you see that actually if I here change this, um, this short circuit current here, those parameters which define the curve are changing as well. And if I put it very low, so basically be, below 30%, the envelope actually changed. So all that is dictated by standard. You don't really have to think about it. The only thing you have to know is what is this, uh, this steady state short circuit current. So you may close the window and run a steady state simulation in order to find that. Else we actually have here an option to do it automatically for you. So when you click on this option here, we run a steady state simulation. And now if I go reopen this breaker, See, automatically now the short circuit current has been populated. So that's something, else, uh, something less you have to worry about. Okay, so now we are, uh, we are done. So we may run the simulation. You have the option to run it manually and then go scopes um, everything, uh, like the, the voltage across the circuit breaker, compare that with the envelope, or you may just do it automatically here, runtime domain simulation and plot survey results. Here the simulation is running. So when we run a TRV study, um, we often require a very small time step, especially when you have like that a short, for a short line. Um, here in this case, I, I cut this line to make it convenient for the video. In, uh, in reality, you don't have to cut this line when you do the terminal fault. And so for the terminal fault, you may use a time step a bit larger than this one, something like one microsecond, for example. If you're using, if you're cutting the line like that, because of the traveling wave, you have to use a much smaller time step. And here I'm using 0.1 microsecond, which is probably a bit too small for what I'm doing here. But, um, you know, it's just for, for um, demonstration purpose. Okay, so the, the present the simulation is finished. You can see here return, we have the max RRV, so the maximum rate of rise of recovery voltage the max TRV, and we see that the TRV is unsuccessful. And we are like 17% uh, below. So now the, the graphs are opening and we are going to visualize. Okay, so I have my three graphs here for each phase. And we see clearly that here, the gap, which is the voltage across the circuit breaker, goes outside of those envelopes. Okay, so if I zoom here, Okay, we see clearly that here the TRV is not correct. Okay, so, so I will have to perform the same study, but with a, another breaker. So what can I do here? I have several options. Either I increase here the rated short circuit current, which will have for impact to um, increase, to uh, make this envelope larger. Or if I cannot find a correct rated short circuit current, I may use a voltage, uh, a rated voltage breaker for class above. This is commonly done for a reactor switching. Okay, so let's try that. Run this simulation. You, we see that even with the uh, higher rated circuit breaker available, it's not possible to respect the TRV here. And so again, in this case, we use an ungrounded fault. So we see it's a pretty, um, uh, it's a pretty harsh case to simulate because those faults are very um, unlikely to happen. So you may want to design your system based on that, but you see that in this case, you will have to probably go for a circuit breaker of a class above, uh, which would be very costly. The, the, the other thing you can do is now to decide to ground the fault and do, to do this analysis 
based on three-phase grounded fault. Okay, so let's try let's try that with the last breaker selected. So we see that now the TRV is okay, and we have a 24% margin, which is a very comfortable margin. We could here actually probably select a lower class in order to have uh, you know a, a less expensive circuit breaker and still uh, have a, and still have a correct TRV. But so for the sake of the demonstration, like, let's keep this circuit breaker. So you will see that all the envelopes are inside. So this is the first step. Now the second step will be to move this fold. So we'll here use the zap, disconnect it, and now put it here in a short line uh, at a short distance of two kilometers away from the substation. I will now change and make this fold only on phase A. So it's phase A to ground fold. I have to go in the circuit breaker now and do two things. First, change the type of event preceding the fold. It is now a single phase to ground fold. And I have to calculate the new short circuit current based on the, this single phase to ground fold. So I will check again, find steady state solution and fill the short circuit current to clear input. Okay, this is finished. We see now the new short circuit current here. So we may now run our time domain simulation and see if this circuit breaker is not correct also for the short line fault. Okay, so we see that here it's again successful. And let's take a look at the curves. So here, obviously, if we look at phase B and C, nothing much happened. Uh, the only variations we see are basically the coupling between phase A and B because, and the A and C because we have high current. And now if we visualize phase A, so here we have to zoom. So to make sure that the, uh, the short line fold is successful, again, the gap voltage across the circuit break breaker must remain inside the envelope. But also you see that this gap voltage must cross this little delay line at least only once. Here that's the case, it crosses only once. This here doesn't count, so it's on, just on the rising, uh, the rising edge. So here we cross it once, we don't cross it again, so it means the TRV is successful. If we cross it the first time and we go back after, it, it's not correct. Okay, so here our circuit breaker is correct for this application. Again, we could optimize the, the, the setting and in order to have a most more economical circuit breaker, but here we pass the test. Let's now demonstrate a transformer limited fault case. So here it's a simple circuit where we have a transmission grid here, so 163 kilovolt RMS line line, and we go to a 13.2 uh, circuit, 13.2 kV circuit. We have a cable system, then here our circuit breaker, then we have a, a very short cable and our transformer here. So what we are going to do is apply again a fault here at the secondary of the transformer. So the breaker, this is what is called a transformer limited fault. The fault will be three phase grounded. Again, closing steady state and never cleared because it is cleared here by the breaker. Okay, so here we open the breaker again uh, at the beginning of the simulation. The uh, my high margin, for example, we can put a value of 5 amps. Uh, this is the, uh, the chopping current, just to repeat. And let's do exactly the same. So right now the breaker is already predetermined. So we have a rated voltage of 15.5. We have a rated transfer of 40. Here, because it's a transformer limited fault, there is a special standard which apply, which is a 37.06.1. Uh, 
before actually changing the class, you have to change the type of event, which is transformer limit default here. And then you may select what is the rated transformer limit default current, which is also a standard value. So let's go ahead and select. For this range, we have only one. And here, plus 40. Like we did previously, let's first select here the short circuit current. Uh, let's de determine the short circuit current. We see that also in this model, we have a database of stray capacitance, which is again very important for the case of, um, of transformer limited faults. Okay, so we see here end of steady state simulation, so we can go take a look at that. Okay, so the C the current is very, uh, the current is. Uh, not high at all, it's very small. Actually, let me make sure the fault is applied. Yes, it's good. Okay, so we may now simulate the, um, the time domain simulation. You see that the short circuit current to clear has been automatically modified. It's just because there is a lower limit in the standard of 10%. Uh, so it basically just put 10% here and uh, uh, but it will just take the maximum TRV envelope possible, so it's it's okay. Okay, so we can see that the TRV here is successful, and we have a margin of five percent. Let's visualize the curves. Okay, so those are typically the type of curve we will get for a transformer related fault. So it's what is called, it is what it is called a resonance, a resonant TRV. Uh, it's also a pure, almost a pure sinusoidal, um, which where the frequency depends on the transformer inductance and the stray capacitance on the, uh, between the, the breaker and the transformer. So that's why it's very important to consider all stray capacitance and capacitance in general in between those two, as they will determine the frequency and the magnitude of uh, this, uh, this TRV here. If, the, if uh, it's not possible uh, to find a circuit breaker to clear um, and to respect the TRV standard, for this uh, medium voltage application, it's possible to use a RC snubber in order to uh, lower this frequency and the magnitude. Uh, so typically, you will select for the RC snubber, the resistance will be equal to um, the, the surge impedance of the cable system. If uh, Let me close this. So I will put here next to the surge arrestor as close as possible to the transformer, uh, RC snubber, where the resistance will match the surge impedance of this, um, of this line. So typically uh, between 40 and 70 ohm, and then you will put a capacitance of a um, few microfarad in order to, or even less actually, like a, a 0.4 or a few microfarad um, in order to uh, to lower the frequency uh, of the of the opening. All right. Thanks for watching. If you have uh, any question, do not hesitate to. Uh, uh, visit our website uh, or to uh, go on, on our LinkedIn community. Um, have a good day. Bye-bye.